All right, Jody, so I think it would be kind of fun to let people get to know some of your favorite things. What's your favorite hobby to do to like relax and like de-stress? I love nature. I love the outdoors. And if I am, if I have an afternoon and I'm in a good place for it, I love water. And pre-tumor, I was a water girl. I was in the water all of the time and I'd love to swim. It's a little tricky now because I don't, I can't blink my eye very well and I can't pressurize. So I can't really get under the water very much, but I still love the water. And so if I have time to be around water, I will be around water. I love to kayak. And so I will kayak on a lake. Like if you put me out on a kayak, I could be out there all day long because not only do I love the activity itself, I also love that I'm in nature. And so I could just sit there not moving at all but just with my camera observing or watching or even for a minute laying back and looking at the sky and then appreciating the wonders of nature. So I will always be out in nature. Uh, I go for a lot of walks. I go for little hikes around where I live. We're in an area where I live in a mountain valley. So there's mountains all over the place and there's hikes all over the place. And because I do live in a mountain valley, but we're also in an area that's a little bit of a desert, I I grew up in an area that, of Northern Virginia that was full of woods and trees and green and water. So when I moved to Utah and got married, I told my husband, I gotta have my water and I gotta have my trees. So we planted, I think I have nine trees in my yard now, and we built a little waterfall stream in my backyard. And so whenever I have time, I am digging in the dirt, I'm playing in my waterfall, I am making things just right so that when the water trickles down, that soothing, wonderful water falling sound uh, just permeates the whole backyard. So you can only choose one. Oh no. What is the nicest thing someone has ever told you? The nicest thing someone the has nice, ever told you. The thing that means the most. This probably isn't going to be maybe what you would expect but I had someone come to me and tell me of a difficult family situation that they had experienced and a super heartbreaking experience they'd had and that because they had read my book and experienced things from my perspective that it changed the way that they were able to see their own life story. Uh, but I had a reader who lost her mother to suicide and she was a young girl when that happened and it was incredibly devastating for her and for her family. And when she read my book, there was a part that talks about how difficult it is to, to be a survivor, to stay alive, because there are definitely times when you're battling something difficult where it would be easier to give up the fight, where it would be easier to check out of things. And it's harder to stay around, but you do it simply for the people around you. There are times where you literally stay alive for the people around you. And she came to me and said, until I read that perspective, I had never understood and never been able to forgive my mother for taking her life when I was young. And now I realize that it was just too much for her and she was in so much pain, it was easier to let go than it was to stick around. It gave me so much peace to know that by sharing my experiences, I could bring some enlightenment and some peace and joy to someone else's life that really has stuck with me that was years and years ago but that has stuck with me have you are you familiar with the book love languages yes what is your love language Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm a doer so i like when people do nice things for me if you want to show me that you care about me and the kitchen's a mess oh if the kitchen gets clean and the dishwasher gets started and the floor gets swept, then it is amazing. So what about favorite music that really kind of gets you in a great mood? What's your go-to music? My go-to music. Okay, so I guess I have two different things. Number one, I still love pop music from the 80s. If I need to have a lift, if it's dark, cold winter day and I need to get myself in a positive place, I will flip on an 80s or 90s channel and I will put on dance music. Things that I know every word to every song and I could lip sync or karaoke it and probably do the dance moves to go along with it. That is the kind of music that will lift me every time. And if I need something that's a little bit deeper internally, um, I have some wonderful uplifting music I listen to, some great Christian artists that I listen to, 
where I know that the messages that they're saying are the things that I want to have those messages going through my mind and on repeat during the day. Nick Day is probably my favorite, but I have several Christian artists that I just uh, really, really love, and, and that gets me going in a positive spiritual and mental place. But there's nothing like putting on some good 80s music and just dancing away in my kitchen either. <laughs> now, of course, this, this goes without saying, if you love 80s music, mm -hmm. then we have to ask the question, who was your childhood teenager celebrity crush? Oh, celebrity crush. I thought you were going to ask me about who my favorite music group was, and I can tell you that without hesitation, it's you too. So, but you didn't ask that question. Who was my celebrity crush? Probably it was um, Sean Astin <laughs> from The Goonies because he seemed so relatable, was always cute and fun, uh, maybe wasn't the biggest star or the best looking hunk out there, but I felt like I knew him, probably because I watched Goonies a hundred times, and he was just, uh, he was the kid I could relate to and felt like I could have a crush on or he could be my brother. <laughs> so you mentioned YouTube. What's your favorite YouTube song? No, but you can only choose one. Your oh, you favorite. can't make me choose one. There's a new YouTube song that probably a lot of people don't know that as far as the meaning, it is absolutely my favorite song and it's called The Moment of Surrender. Um, that's that's my favorite because of the meaning of it. I would say, if I think back into history, what my favorites would be, you know, the junior high school dance, I'm dancing to With or Without You, or to One, or to some of those iconic that you know what they are, where the streets have no name. The minute that the music starts and you can hear that electric guitar, the, the whole room just gets excited for what's coming. So those will always be classics in my heart. But I have to say I love, uh, I love the moment of surrender for the meaning and the personal depth of that song. What about your favorite food when it comes to like, it's Friday night, you're going to hang out with Tolan and just, you're going to eat something that you guys maybe both enjoy or maybe even just you. What is that okay, favorite Okay, that's food? a great question. So I will say that has changed over time. When I got married, there were a lot of foods I didn't think that I liked. And I say I didn't think that I liked because the reality was I just hadn't been exposed to them very much. I didn't think I liked much in the way of Italian food. I didn't think I liked very many different kinds of Asian foods. Well, the reality is we just didn't have those things growing up. We had seven kids, my mom homemade dinners every night, and I ate what she fixed, which were very specific things on repeat. You know, we had 10 menu items that we had over and over again. So the reality is I have found I like a ton of different kinds of foods. And uh, after, well, through my brain tumor journey, I lost my taste buds. That was part of the effects of the tumor. So with my nerves being paralyzed, I actually lost the ability to taste food. And so for two years, I could eat whatever I wanted and it, none of it tasted good. So now that my taste buds are back, I like everything. I, I just love flavor and there is very little that I don't enjoy eating. Probably my favorite food is Indian food. I love chicken tikka masala. It's probably my favorite meal. Um, I also love Thai. I also love, you know, kind of Asian infused cuisine. Love Mexican. Could eat Mexican tacos, street tacos, any day of the week. Love Italian. America is probably the most boring, but there's also nothing like a good hamburger and fries. So my we would go to all sorts of places on a Friday night, uh, but I always want something that's got a lot of flavor and usually some kind of ethnic food. All right, last question for the Get to Know Jody episode today. <laughs> what about, is there a talent that you have that most people don't know you have? Ooh, a talent that I have that people don't know. Okay, this, I, I'm... People think of me as a word girl because I speak and because I write books. I'm actually pretty good with numbers too. And when I was young, I was a little bit of a math whiz. And so I would say I do have a talent with numbers. Now that doesn't mean that I can remember all parts of calculus and, and things like that because you also do what you practice. And I have long since stopped practicing some of those different things. I like math. What I do for fun, before I go to bed at night, you might think that this is crazy, but I play Sudoku, one of those number games. I play that and try to, to solve the little Sudoku puzzles, and I find it actually relaxes me. For some people, it stresses them out, but it actually relaxes me, and then I'm not thinking about other things, and then I fall right to sleep when it's time to go to bed. <laughs> 
Well, that's definitely something that I did not know about <laughs> you, and I'm sure lots of the audience did it as well. So uh, thank you for sharing that.